The Biden administration faced charges of hypocrisy last week when White House spokesperson John Kirby awkwardly sidestepped questions about Israeli President Benjamin Netanyahu's use of the supposedly genocidal phrase from the river to the sea. Let's watch. Did the president address Netanyahu's use of the phrase from the river to the sea in their conversation today? I know the White House has previously said that phrase is divisive. So. Uh, I'm not aware that that specific phrase was discussed. Using that phrase. Uh, look, there's a there's a connotation with that uh, f phrase. We've talked about this before, um, but when you know when you use the phrase "river to the sea," it it speaks basically to the mantra of Hamas and in their manifesto, where they basically describe the geographic bounds of what they believe to be Palestine. And if you look at it on the map, if you go look at the, the four corners that they describe it, it's basically the state of Israel. They just don't believe it should exist. So uh, again, it's, it's not a phrase that, um, uh, that we recommend uh, uh, using given because of that context. This wasn't Hamas, this was Netanyahu. I understand. I, I don't have anything more on that, and I certainly don't have anything more on the conversation to read out with respect to that. That response comes as the Biden administration has tried to argue its response to the current atrocities in Gaza. As The Intercept reports, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken said what we're seeing every single day in Gaza is gut-wrenching at a WF event in Davos, as though he has never been one of the premier enablers of the destruction of Gaza himself. The Israeli-Hamas war could have huge consequences for Biden in the upcoming election, as crucial swing state voters in Michigan criticize the president over his Israel policy. Let's watch. Saba, you said reproductive rights are a huge factor for you, but that you probably won't vote for President Biden. I think it would be hypocritical of me to use reproductive rights as a way to justify voting for Biden when Biden is aiding and sending military aid to Israel, which is airstriking Gaza and blocking humanitarian aids leading to women there who are pregnant, um, either getting C-sections without anesthesia. Also ongoing is a suit in federal courts accusing the Biden White House of aiding and abetting a genocide, while, of course, Israel is awaiting a preliminary ruling at the International Court of Justice at The Hague. Here to discuss further is Intercept co-founder Jeremy Scahill. Welcome back, Jeremy. Great to be with you. So let's start with this river to the sea comment. Um, I am seeing uh, Haaretz, for example, claims that this was a translation error and that what he said is Israel must have um, security control over this territory. Um, does that, is that a, any different to you? What do you make of this? No, it's not different. And this is a classic example of the kind of Hasbara um, attacks that we've been seeing take place um, also at the International Court of Justice, where uh, promoters of Israel's war of annihilation try to make the issue some domestic politics within South Africa instead of the very clear evidence that's been laid out for genocidal intent, followed up by genocidal policies in Gaza. But what's interesting about this, whether the translation is wrong or not, and I tend to trust my uh, my colleagues in Israel who say that it was a mistranslation, is that the point that he was making um, amounts to the same thing. And in fact, uh, people like to talk a lot about the previous charter that Hamas had, uh, which has been amended, and people often leave out that Hamas actually softened a bunch of its language in its official charter. In the Likud party charter of 1977, and of course, this is Benjamin Netanyahu's ruling party, um, in their charter in 1977, it said, quote, between the sea and the Jordan, there will only be Israeli sovereignty. This has been Netanyahu's uh, position, his the entirety of his political career. Joe Biden has known that from the beginning. Uh, Biden knew certainly that when he began greenlighting the unconditioned military aid to Netanyahu, um, that a, a man who is flailing politically on October 6th, Benjamin Netanyahu, whose political future was very much in question, that he was going to wage this scorched earth campaign for survival and the pile of Palestinian corpses was going to be the cost of his battle for survival. So this has been Netanyahu's agenda from the beginning, whether he literally used that phrase or not. I know it, it makes for, you know, interesting discussion and debate, given how uh, so many U.S. institutions have tried to equate that with anti-Semitism. But the fact is that it's been Likud party 
uh, policy since at least 1977, explicitly saying between the sea and the Jordan, there will only be Israeli sovereignty. This is a war of annihilation. It's very clear that Netanyahu's aim um, is to secure his political career by planting the flag on a pile of Palestinian corpses and by uh, crushing definitively in his desire um, any hopes for a Palestinian state. Jeremy, you've also, uh, people have also pointed out that uh, Benjamin Netanyahu has been very clear, repeatedly saying that he does not support a two-state solution, that there will not be a Palestinian state, at the same time that Joe Biden has been saying that that is the ultimate goal of the United States in supporting Israel, uh, both monetarily and with weapons, as it uh, conducts its siege on Gaza. You recently wrote a piece in The Intercept titled, Joe Biden wants you to believe he's opposed to the genocide in Gaza. Can you unpack the kind of uh, media narratives that are I think doing the work to create some distance between uh, Bibi Netanyahu's statements and Joe Biden's ongoing support oh, and how we should understand the U.S.'s role in facilitating what's going on in Gaza. Well, from very early on, when the death toll, death toll started to rise, and especially when Arab Americans started to raise their voices and, and it started to filter into Democratic Party politics and, in fact, the 2024 election, you saw what started as a kind of stealth campaign by the um, uh, administration's uh, propaganda spinmeisters, where they started to plant stories about how deeply concerned Secretary of State Antony Blinken and President Biden and National Security Advisor Sullivan are um, about the toll this is taking on Palestinian civilians. And a couple of months ago, we started hearing the phrase uh, losing patience, that Biden is losing patience with Netanyahu. Um, and this culminated then with NBC News saying, um, put, sort of putting the goods on the table, where they quoted a senior U.S. official saying that if this, if this goes really bad, meaning the war in Gaza, we want to be able to point to our past statements. So you know, quite explicitly, the, the whole point of this is to try to put markers along the path of destruction in Gaza to be able to have Biden say, well, we actually worked really hard to try to make Netanyahu stop this. I mean, Robbie, you and, and Bree both know you've been covering politics for, for quite a while. Um, the, the fact is that politicians like to be able to have it both ways. And this has been a hallmark of President Biden's career uh, stretching over a half century where he tries to be able to have it both ways perhaps most famously with the war on Iraq, which of course he not only voted in favor of, uh, of he was the chair of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee in 2002 when the debate should have been had about whether or not the United States should even be going into Iraq, not the, the debate on whether we should completely destroy their society and their civilians, or we should just do a limited air campaign. So, you know, this is a hallmark of Biden's uh, career. They're very concerned about how this is going to translate both on an international level and a domestic political level. Um, and people like Anita Dunn and others who are these uh, spin masters who have a very sh shady history themselves of representing all kinds of nefarious people, they, they know what they're doing. And unfortunately, Unfortunately, large corporate media outlets are allowing their pages and airwaves to be used as conveyor belts for a completely disingenuous emo posturing campaign by the Biden administration while they arm and politically defend and, in fact, defend against genocide charges this Israeli regime run by a maniac, Benjamin Netanyahu. You know, the trying to have it both ways uh, that Joe Biden manifests, I think, is is said so aptly. You know, this is someone who uh, who who talked about um, uh, who criticized the Saudis, for instance, but then it does a fist bump, who uh, the other month met with Xi Jinping, but then called him a dictator shortly thereafter, which was seen as a diplomatic faux pas. Um, someone who is you know, saying we're totally committed to Israel and we're giving them all this aid, but we don't like what they're doing about it, but we're not, uh, where we don't, he doesn't agree with Netanyahu's policies all the way, but is unwilling to withhold that aid potentially in order to get something. If, if diplomacy is trying to, you know, trying to get the U.S. interest advance by offering something, all right, working with people and then, you know, being willing to walk away if they're not going to further the agenda you say you want. And for, even from Biden's perspective, it sounds like Netanyahu is no longer doing that. What does it say about this president that he's apparently um, too, it's, it's one sided. He gives what is requested, but doesn't get what his own administration says is the goal with respect to Palestine actually having its own state. Well, I think there's a very dark conclusion that unfortunately we have to draw uh, and that is that uh, this is proceeding how Joe Biden wants it. Um, you know, Joe Biden is not just like other American presidents who are, are by default just supportive of Israel. 
Um, Joe Biden has been one of the most passionate, committed supporters of Israel when it's operating at its most uh, obscene, at its most um, aggressive in mass killing campaigns. You know, there was a, a, a in 2014 when Obama was president, Israeli U.S. relations were at a, a sort of serious low point. Um, Netanyahu really uh, despised Obama and it sort of came to a head in 2014. And Biden then goes and he gives a speech at a, at a major uh, Jewish organization gathering in the United States. And, and one of the first things he does is, is says, I want to make sure that everybody knows that I'm not upset with Bibi. And during that speech, he uh, calls him his very good friend and he also calls him his great, great friend. Um, you have a 50 year track record to point to on Biden. With some presidents, you can say, oh, this is just part of the bipartisan machinery. Um, if Biden wanted to stop this, he could stop it. He doesn't need to leak stories to the New York Times and the Washington Post about how he's losing patience. Um, Biden could cut off the weapons. And in fact, we know Biden, A, doesn't want to cut off the weapons, and B, that he actively uh, opposed Senator Bernie Sanders' very minimal effort at bringing some accountability to try to ensure that the State Department was abiding by U.S. law and not facilitating the transfer of arms to uh, nations or forces that are committing human rights abuses. So the lip service um, and, you know, seven dollars will buy you um, a latte. Um, but the actions matter. And in this case, Biden's actions are extraordinarily damning. We In the last 24 hours alone, 190 Palestinians have been killed. Khan Yunus has basically been turned into a small killing cage. You have the Israelis attacking uh, shelters that they told people to go to because they would be safe. You have women having cesarean sections with no anesthesia because of the siege and the blockade. You have children having limbs amputated because of no anesthesia. You have 10,000 plus children who have been killed. You have more than 25,000 Palestinians who have been killed. And Joe Biden is losing patience. Get out of there. Get out of here with that stuff. I mean, this is this is garbage, garbage politics. This is a mass murder campaign that Biden is actively and wittingly facilitating. Jeremy Scahill, thank you so much for joining us today. Great to be with you guys always.